Are you thinking of trying rosemary oil for hair loss? Well, if that's you, we've made this video for you. We're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about rosemary oil. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Guys, just before we get into the video on rosemary oil, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, let's get straight into some of the photos of people who have used rosemary oil for their hair loss. Firstly, this 61-year-old man posted these before and after photos after seven months of using rosemary oil. Now, they are not from the same angle, unfortunately, but there is definitely visible improvement. This woman used it to treat hair loss following her pregnancy. You can see the before photos in the top row and after in the bottom. There is a dramatic improvement in density and coverage. Now, in fairness, postpartum hair loss typically does resolve on its own, so it's not clear how much of the improvement was due to the oil, but it certainly didn't do any harm. A fellow YouTuber posted a video detailing his experiences with using rosemary for six months. I've linked to it in the description below. You can see his before and after photos on the left and on the right after six months. Not a dramatic difference, but clear enough that you could tell which is the before and which is the after picture. So first, what is rosemary oil? Well, rosemary oil is the essential oil of the rosemary plant. The term essential oil refers to a liquid extract of the plant. This is created through a process that uses massive quantities of the plant to distill its scent or essence into a relatively tiny amount of liquid. I'll tell you exactly how much of the rosemary plant is consumed in the process in just a minute. But going back to the rosemary plant, it's actually a member of the mint family. It was originally found in regions of Asia, North Africa, and the Mediterranean. But it's now a very popular commercial plant grown all over the world. It can reach 1.5 to 2 meters in height. It's been used medicinally for thousands of years as a remedy for many ailments, including asthma, pain, indigestion, insomnia, and many more things. And in the past, it was often linked to mystical and magical powers, as well as romantic love. In the modern scientific literature, it has been studied for its antioxidant, antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal properties. So there is definitely something special about this plant. Now, to give you an idea of just how much rosemary is required to make the oil, you get about eight tons of rosemary plant for every acre that you cultivate. And that's enough for only 20 to 25 kilos of rosemary oil. So there is a lot of rosemary plant that went into that tiny rosemary bottle. Now, what does the hair loss research show? So guys, we do have some interesting animal studies on the hair growth properties of the oil, like this 2013 study on mice, which found that the rosemary extract induced hair growth in mice. The mice had had the hair growth cycle artificially interrupted by testosterone administration. The rosemary extract significantly promoted the hair regrowth of mice that had had their dorsal area shaved. You can see it in this graph how the rosemary induced a regrowth pattern almost as good as minoxidil. In this graph, the vertical axis is the regrowth score and the horizontal is the number of days into treatment. The rosemary curve is the one with the arrows, the one with the squares is minoxidil, and the circle is the control group. The researchers also found that the rosemary oil exhibited, and I quote here, potent inhibitory activity of 5-alpha reductase, which definitely makes it a promising candidate for hair loss treatment, at least on paper. A couple of years after this, in 2015, we got the only published study to this date on the effects of rosemary oil on balding men. A research team out of Iran published a paper comparing rosemary essential oil to 2% minoxidil for the treatment of male pattern hair loss. The men in the study were aged 18 to 49 and had grade 2 to 4 on the Hamilton Norwood scale, so mild to moderate. They applied a rosemary oil lotion or the minoxidil twice daily every 12 hours. Treatment lasted for six months and the results were evaluated at the three and six month mark. After six months, the hair counts in the rosemary oil group had gone up by seven hairs, from an average of 122 hairs to 129. The researchers also noted better treatment compliance in rosemary compared to the minoxidil group, which was presumably down to the fact that rosemary oil was better tolerated, 
with lower levels of itching. You can see here the before and after photos of a man who is in the rosemary group. Pause the video here and see if you can tell which is the before and which is the after. If you said the one on the right is the after photo, then you are correct. So like all essential oils, rosemary oil is too strong to apply straight out of the bottle. So you must never apply it in its undiluted form. The best way is to mix it with the so-called carrier oil, which is a vegetable oil and is more or less equivalent to vehicle in topical medications. The carrier oil will enable you to apply the rosemary oil safely in the first place, but it will also allow you to use smaller quantities of it and at the same time spread it over large skin areas. The other function of carrier oils is to slow down the evaporation process of the rosemary oil and allow it to be better absorbed. Because like all essential oils, rosemary oil evaporates very quickly. The most common carrier oils are coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, jojoba oil, and grapeseed oil. But there are many, many more carrier oils out there. If you are new to essential oils, you can experiment to see what carrier oil works for you. But if you're using specifically rosemary oil for hair loss, an obvious carrier would be castor oil. This oil, which is derived from the seeds of the castor plant, is a vegetable oil that is widely used to promote hair growth. Now we've covered castor oil in past videos, which you can find in the links below. Now, when it comes to dosage, aim for around 2-3% dilution rate, which works out to be about 10-20 to 20 drops per ounce of carrier oil. Another possibility is to combine rosemary oil with other essential oils used against hair loss, most notably peppermint oil and lavender oil. Lemongrass oil is another essential oil shown to promote healthy hair by fighting dandruff. So it's another oil that you want to consider adding in. And guys, of course, if you can't be bothered with carrier oils and making all the preparations, there's always the simple option. Just simply put a few drops of the oil in your shampoo. Now guys, we hate to close out the video on a negative note, but the sad reality is many of the rosemary oils that you will find on the market are fake. Either outright synthetics manufactured in a lab or actual rosemary oil diluted that's been diluted with other oils. It's not just rosemary, this applies to all essential oils. By some estimates, the majority of essential oils on the market today are either fake, diluted, or just a little bit impure. Some say the figure is actually as high as 80%. You see, the tremendous amount of rosemary needed to make even a tiny bottle means that there's a great incentive to cut corners or outright deceive the consumer. So here are a few tips to maximize your chances of landing a genuine rosemary oil. The first is to buy directly from the producer whenever possible. Avoid shopping from eBay, Amazon, or other third-party vendors. Number two is that genuine synthetic oils should come in dark glass bottles to protect them from the light, though sometimes the bottle can be dark amber or blue. If the oil comes in a clear glass bottle or in a plastic bottle, it's probably fake. Guys, the third tip is the price. If it looks too good to be true, I can assure you that in the case of essential oils, then it probably is. There is just no way to get good essential oils on the cheap. And the fourth thing is to make sure that the maker or the product label mentions the Latin name of the plant, which for rosemary is Rosmarinus officinalis. Ideally, you also want to see the details of the extraction method used, for example, steam distillation. And guys, the fifth tip is that there is a simple test that you can do at home to quickly see if your oil is pure or not. Simply pour a drop of it on a white piece of paper and let it evaporate. If it leaves an oily stain behind, it's impure, probably diluted with a carrier oil. Genuine essential oils should evaporate without leaving a trace. The combinations, permutations, and applications of these oils are basically endless. And this is one of the reasons people are attracted to these oils. Now we've done loads of videos on various essential oils in the past and I've linked to them in the description below. And if you want to find out more about three of the most popular essential oils for hair loss, then you can click the video on the screen now.